Hey, this is Bezo with Grayson Hobby. I got the Hawk Sky right here, and we get a lot of questions every day on how to build it. So what we did, um, we got a special guest, Jeff. He's going to help us build the Hawk Sky, and he'll, he's done a little video for us. He's going to go over the little details a manual doesn't cover, or doesn't cover in great detail. He's going to do a step-by-step -step video from how to put the, the tail feathers on into how to program the radio. And we even got a little section on there on where the CG goes, okay? So if this video doesn't cover everything that you need, hopefully it does, please feel free to leave a comment below, a question, or anything else you have related to the Hawk Sky or anything else that we sell. Um, we'll be monitoring that this thread right here, and uh, if Jeff, myself, Will, and everybody else will be answering your questions. Um, so let's get this build going, and here is Jeff. Hi, I'm Jeff for Grayson Hobby, and today I'm going to be checking out the Dynam Hawk Sky V2 Ray to fly airplane. A ray to fly airplane, just in case you don't know, means everything is in the box you need to make it fly, with exception of batteries for the radio. I have everything laid out on the table already. I put the decals on it already to save a little time. I don't want to bore you with a two hour video. There's the wing halves with the aileron servos and connections already installed. Elevator control surface and horizontal stabilizer. Vertical stabilizer and rudder. That's very cool. These LiPo batteries now come with Dean's connectors. Instead of the old style bullet ones, you can't hardly get apart. Comes with a balanced charger and a wall plug. The fuselage already has the motor installed and pre-wired and in this convenient hatch right here. That's magnetic. Stays on during flight. Is the electronic speed controller or ESC. The servo for the elevator and the rudder. And the receiver is also in there and already pre-wired. This is also the compartment where the battery will go during flight. One of the best features about the plane is the awesome radio. This is a 2.4 gigahertz four channel radio with lots of options. It has servo reversing switches, a dual rate knob, which means you can add or decrease the amount of throw on your control surfaces, engine protection safety switch, and it also has a programmable ESC. Um, it's already programmed with the propeller brake on you can choose that on or off. And you can also choose the motor timing options, for instance, hard or soft. Right now the plane is programmed for soft, which means maximum efficiency and nice smooth flying. Now, if I program it to hard, it's going to give it 20% more power and much faster flying and a little less run time. So that's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of nice options for the radio. So that's everything in the box with the exception of the hardware, which has the glue and some screws, prop spinner, and spare prop, and some other things I'll be using during the build. I like to do the sub-assemblies first. I think it's kind of easier that way than trying to put these on after you put it on the plane. So I went ahead and I've installed the control surface horn for the rudder. It has two tiny screws and a back plate on it. Same with the elevator control surface, with the exception of the connection here, the connector. This connector will allow the linkage rod for the elevator to push it up and down, where the one on the rudder will have a clevis that snaps onto it and not needed. So that's done and out of the way. I pushed the carbon fiber halfway into one of the wing halves, and I took the two wires coming from the receiver to right now. These two are the aileron wires, the aileron connections. I'm going to push them through that hole you see back there. Really easy. I'm going to push them through there. And reach in from the other side and pull them out. There's my aileron connections right there. So now all I have to do is 
take a wing half, just like this, get very, very close, and then I can plug up the connection. I'm going to make sure I have my color codes turned the same way. And I can push that in there a little bit. Now I can take the other wing half, slide it on the rod. When I get very close, I will also plug it up to the connection. Remember this build is just in case you've never done this before. A lot of people may know how to do this, but some may not. And then it's going to require quite a bit of force to push this all the way together. But as I do so, I will slowly pull the slack in those wires back this way. I don't want them caught up in there and getting all sloppy and stuff. So as I push, and also, these will be glued in. The control surfaces, or the, the elevator and the rudder, and the wings do need to be glued onto the airplane. I haven't put glue on them yet. I want to show everyone how they go together before I glue it all together. So that part's very easy. To put the elevator on, I will apply glue to this. And the little hole in the connector is where the elevator rod will come. So I'll need to kind of hold it up a little bit. As I push this on there like this, see this wire needs to go over the elevator for the rudder. So I'll need to look in there very carefully like this, line that wire up with that hole and then push it on there. And then I can tighten it with a, through the hole and a screw located right there. There's a hole right there to put the screwdriver in to tighten that with. Then I will put glue on this surface of the vertical stabilizer and rudder and just push it right down into there like that. I'll let it set up for a few moments then I can clamp the clevis on and the tail feathers are done. So this plane is very very easy and quite fun to build. There are some very tiny screws in the hardware pack with little washers already on them and they are for holding in the landing gear. This little plastic piece goes in there now that keeps it from moving around too much and then I'll put a screw there and a screw there on the tail I'll just take this landing gear push it into the little hole just like that then all I need to do is put a screw there and then a screw there and the landing gear is done this tube in the hardware package is the canopy glue. It's to glue the canopy onto the base of the cockpit hatch and also you can use it to glue the pilot onto the styrofoam. Now the last thing to assemble on the plane would be the propeller. So I'm going to take the spinner plate, put it on this way. This is the pusher prop so I'm going to put it face, see how it has a very uniquely made there. I'm going to push it on this way. If you put it on wrong, it will not work. It won't fit. The spinner will not go on if you put it on wrong. That's one way you'll know. Then all you need to do is put on the washer and the nut and tighten it. And then I can screw the spinner on. Now I'll need to make sure when I tighten my prop that I have it moved to where it will allow me to put those two screws for the spinner on. Very, very easy. Just in case you have never hooked up a receiver to an airplane, I think the easiest way is to first take all the wires, like this is the throttle, because it's coming from the ESC and the battery wire, so I know that's the throttle. This is the elevator servo. This with the Y harness is the ailerons. And then this is the rudder. So all I gotta do is take channel, let's do the ailerons first. Just gonna plug it right up into there where it says ailerons. Take the elevator. I'll make sure I turn my wires the same way. 
I don't want to turn them opposite directions. I want to keep the color codes all the same way. Now the throttle and the channel 3. What's left now is the rudder. That easy to hook up. Very, very easy. Now the plane is built, I'm going to check out all the control surfaces. Make sure everything works good and turn the radio on. Plug the battery up. Those beeps are the ESC letting me know that everything's okay. Now the motor's not going to work, so I flip the switch. Now let me hold the plane. Okay. Now once again, this is the dual rate knob for the elevator and the ailerons. Minimum movement there, and then maximum movement. So the plane works fine, ready for flight. To check the center of gravity on the Hawk Sky V2, I have the battery as far forward as possible, as in flight position, and I have it balanced on a basic, simple balance machine here. You can use your fingers or pencils with erasers, anything you can hold stable. So it's balancing right about there. Uh, the manual said between 50 and 55 millimeters. I think 55 millimeters is like 2.16 inches. So it's between one and three quarters and two inches off the leading edge of the wing. Once again, I have the battery in it in the flight position. The landing gear and all the hardware, everything is on the plane. That's the easiest way to check the center of gravity. You should literally balance it. This is how the Hawk Sky V2 looks when fully assembled, ready to fly, and the decals put on it. This has been Jeff for Grace and Hobby. And if you have any questions or comments about the airplane, please let us know in the comment box below.